Hello and welcome to the first video for the first review module on fractions. Here we're going to go way back and review the basic notion of what a fraction is and some standard notations. Again, this goes back many years in your school mathematical experience, and I expect that most of this is review, but it's really useful to make sure we understand the basic concept of what a fraction is and to standardize our notations. Your notations and your terminology may be different. You might have learned in a different language, so it's useful to have a set of terminology and a set of notations that you can expect from the typical Canadian English-speaking university math situation. So, fraction concepts and notations. Let's start with what we're talking about. A fraction are things divided into pieces. Three-sevenths, you have a whole, you divide it into seven pieces, you have three of those pieces. That's the basic idea of what a fraction is. Fractions can be numbers like that, three divided into seven pieces, or fractions can be expressions that have all sorts of variables in them. We will deal with lots of expressions like this, so we can have fractions that are as complicated as we want. As I talked about when we did the algebra modules, fractions are always implicitly division, and our conventional way of writing division in higher mathematics is not using the division symbol, but simply writing division as a fraction. So when I have three-fifths, I think of dividing a whole into five parts and collecting three of those parts. I also think of three div dividing three into five pieces. If I take three things, divide into five pieces, each piece is 0 0.6 of a, a solid piece. Each piece is three-fifths of a solid whole. So I, I think of fractions as the division. I think of it as 3 divided by 5 as well as the fraction 3 fifths. And that always plays around in my mind when I'm doing mathematics. It's always something we have to keep track of that we're sort of using the same notation for two purposes, two related and connected purposes, but two purposes all the time. These fractions can always be division. Uh, you may have been taught about mixed fractions and non-mixed fractions. So if I have nine quarters, I can think of that as two and one quarter. In, in university mathematics, we almost always leave our fractions in the non-mixed form. It's just a lot easier to deal with them, to multiply and divide than to deal with the numerators and denominators than to have this two sitting out front. Um, so for, for our purposes and what you can expect in university mathematics situations, to not use mix, mixed fractions, to leave our fractions like nine quarters instead of two and one quarter. Uh, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything, so the fraction 7 over 1 is the same as the number 7. That's a notational thing. Um, it's very good to know that 1s the denominators can just be removed. We can just write it as the number 7. We can go the other way if we, if we want. If we sometimes want to write a whole number as a fraction, I want to write the number 37 as a fraction. I'll write it as 37 over 1, and that way I can manipulate it with some of the rules that we're going to work out in these modules for manipulating fractions. So that's that's a nice trick and a nice concept to go back and forth between writing things as whole numbers and writing them as fractions with one on the denominator. One thing you may remember from your school experience is the notion of reducing fractions and putting fractions in lowest terms. And this applies, this terminology mostly applies to fractions with numbers, although we will talk about reducing fractions with variables later in these videos and the modules. But let's review what the idea of reducing fractions is. If we have a fraction 25 over 10, or think of this as a division of 25 divided by 10, we can notice that 25 and 10 share a common factor. 5 divides 25 and 5 divides 10. The basic first rule for manipulating fractions is we can manipulate a fraction by doing the same thing to the numerator and denominator um, with multiplication and division. So I can multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. I can divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing. And these don't change the fraction. And it's only multiplication and division that I, that's not any other operations. But this is, this is really, really valuable for working with fractions. So when I reduce, what I want to do here is I, in fact, I want to take the numerator and divide by 5, take the denominator and divide by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So this fraction, 25 over 10, is the same fraction as 5 halves. And 5 halves is what we call the lowest terms of this fraction. It's as reduced as far as we can. There are no more common factors. We think of this as the simplest way of writing in fractions. Each individual number represented as a fraction can be written in all sorts of different ways. But if we remove all these common factors, like removing these fives, we can write a fraction in 
the simplest form, which we call lowest terms, sometimes lowest order terms. Another nice notational thing, conceptual thing, to get sorted out at the start is if we have a negative in a fraction, either in the numerator or in the denominator, that's the same thing as just having the negative of the fraction. So negative 4 divided by 5 or 4 divided by negative 5 is the same thing as negative 4 fifths, which is the same number as negative 0 0.8 if I want to write it in decimal notation. This is good because we can move these negatives around. If we have a negative in the denominator, a negative in the numerator, we can pull them out, have them as negatives in front of the whole fraction. And that's a really, really nice tidying up that we can do to keep track of, of these negative signs. And if we have multiple negative signs, we can cancel them off because two negatives multiplied together cancel each other off.